So you brought, you brought up the Bible, so let's go down that road. And when you're looking at um, uh, the Bible in terms of finance and money, God and money, a lot of people are raised into thinking that, hey, Charlie, you've got a lot of money, it's a sin, you should just be content, relax, you shouldn't be so damn ambitious, God's gonna provide. What would you say to Christian and believers out there that being rich is a sin? I love the word so much. The more you read the word, the more it reads you. It's this relationship. It's infinitely deep. The, harmon the harmonizing of the scriptures. And I've been doing a deep study of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But that's a, we could talk about that if you want. You're, you're, you're talking about it with two things. Number one is a misreading of Jesus' commandment around money. He says the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? None of you should love money. You should not. Instead, you should understand money is a tool. It's a, it comes from a Greek word, techne, a technology. You can use it for good or you could use it for bad. Now, but what does Jesus say about multiplication? This is a much more important teaching. <coughs> the parable of the talents is one of the strongest lessons towards modern economy and entrepreneurs. If you're not familiar with the parable of the talents, Jesus, our Lord, is talking to his disciples about a scenario. A he talked in parables, and it was a way that we could better understand, you know, what God wants to tell us. So, so Jesus says, look, there's three people, okay, and they're all given a certain distribution. And by the way, this is totally true. If I picked three random people, and I brought them up on stage, and I said, you get five dollars, you get five dollars, and you get five dollars, a day later, someone would have zero dollars, someone would have twenty dollars, and someone would have a hundred dollars. And in the parable of the talents, one of the people hides their money, right, under a rock. Another person modestly multiplies, and a, another person tremendously multiplies that money. For the person that hid their talent, now a talent can actually be applicable to your actual talents or money, right? So it actually in the story meant money. Who did nothing with it, who hid it under a rock, received condemnation in the parable. How dare you do nothing with what God has given you? Every single one of you, this is why I can't stand when people say, follow your heart, that's bad advice, don't do that, okay? I'm going to do what I love, don't do that. Do what you're good at. Every single one of you has a God-given skill. Every single one of you. So you might say, well, Charlie, I, I don't know what my skill is. What do people compliment you on? That is different. Maybe you're good at noticing, good at writing, good at speaking, good at organizing, good at empathizing, good at whatever it is. Find that skill that you don't truly hate and then pursue that. Whatever it is. For me, my number one love would be college football. Like, okay. But yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Got one college football fan. That's great. <laughs> um, but it's not the thing I'm best at. I enjoy what I do, and obviously I've learned to love it, but I'm good at speaking, I'm good at communicating, I'm good at writing, I'm good at doing these things. And so in the parable of the talents, Christ wants you to identify what God has given you and to take it and make more of it and to multiply it. And that is across the board, including financially. Now, I, I'm not gonna do the whole like prosperity gospel thing where God wants you to be rich and all this. I could tell you, God does not want you to be sitting still. That is a fact, and I'll prove it to you. All of us need to read Genesis 12 and the story of Abram. And that applies, especially to men, but it applies to women too. Get off your tail, leave your father's home, and go on an adventure. Genesis 12 is this incredible thing. So it's the city of Babel in Genesis. Sorry, I, I could go as deep as Rock, rocket. Genesis 11 is this cra crazy story, city of Babel. They want to build a one world government. God says not so fast, sound familiar, anyway. So Genesis 12. You hear about this guy, Abram, living at his parents' home till his like 70s, like sitting around, and God says, get up, go on an adventure. And boy, was it ever an adventure. God does not want you to be comfortable. He wants you, as it says in Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous to go forth. Do you think Moses was thrilled when he was in Midian? He had a great life. Father-in-law likes him. That's not always the case. I Thankfully, it is for me, but when you get married, you'll realize that. Father-in-law likes him, right? Jethro, everything's great. And he's just going for a stroll. And that darn bush had to be on fire. And his life 
changed forever. In fact, it changed so much that in Numbers and Deuteronomy, Moses repeatedly says, God, why did you make me do this? These people won't stop complaining. These people are the worst. He's talking about the Hebrews. Like, you know, he's like, they're, why? And God says, because I told you. And I am who I am. Tough luck. But he called them on an adventure that changed human history. Time and time again, the heroes of the Bible are people that leave comfort and they go towards adversity. They leave what is easy and they go towards what is good. And that is a call for each and one of your lives. Come on.